What's going on? Hey, I'm good. Hello, Tomas. Ohayou gozaimasu. Hey, konbawa. 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 <laughs> how are you? It's I'm great good. How are you? Great to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> yeah. So what do we got? We got 10 a.m. your time, 9 p.m. my time, as I'm in,、yes. uh, in Miami in the 305. Yeah. How is it over there? It's Miami, you know everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have a little bit of a crazy storm tonight, and all my、uh, surfer friends are super happy because we have a swell coming in, which is rare down here, and、uh, all geared up to hit the beaches. But they can't hit the beaches here in Miami. Have to drive a little bit away. But、uh, yeah, weather's coming in. Oh wow, that's awesome! Oh, Emmy, hi. Hi, Emmy. I. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, honey. Oh, good morning, everybody, and good evening, everybody in the states. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I just watched his video with his niece, and it was so cute. Oh. Yeah, no. Watched your um, your video. Yeah, no. I've I've been doing these videos. Um, I I call it get a word, and and I was really wanting to connect with people just to really talk about like. The next thing, and、uh, more importantly, just kind of bringing some normalcy to conversation.、Um, uh, my my niece saw that I was doing it, and you know, she's like, "I want an interview with Uncle Joshi," and it was really cool to speak to a five year old who's like <laughs> home, self quarantining, you know, and and, and、yeah. it was really cute. It was a lot of fun. Aww, yeah, she's so adorable. She's the best, <laughs> and she she just had her graduation、uh, yesterday. And they had to do the whole thing. It's kindergarten graduation or pre-K, and it was you know a drive-through graduation. So it was like super sweet, and all the teachers were in front with big balloons, everything. And then you know the parents drove through with their kids out the windows, and you can just see the parents like emotion. I mean, I wasn't sure if it was like because this is going to be my kid's memory, or like I want to drop the kid off with you. I need some time alone to not be a、yeah. teacher today. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's a question that says, "Who are you?" I think they're trying to ask who we are. Okay.、Totally. Okay. So first, I want to I want to introduce my friend Josh, <laughs> Joshua Wagner.、Um, we met how long ago? Probably like five years ago or so. Yeah, a, a, a while ago. Yeah, we met at、um, we met at an event、um, for probably I don't know what it was for, but we、um, we did like an interview together.、Yeah. Um, and before then, I might have met you too. What's that? I might have met you before then as well, but I don't、mm. know exactly when we like formally met. We've probably been to a couple different social events that at, at the same time. And, yes.、Uh, and mutual friends for sure. Yes, definitely.、Um, so, Josh, can you tell me a little bit about what you're what you're into, what you're doing? Yeah. So I'm.、Uh, my name's Josh. I live here in Miami.、Uh, my background is. A lot in the hospitality business, like hotels, restaurants, bars.、Uh, I've been working in the hospitality space for 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 twenty years.、Um, Sumire and I really, I think, can say we really met met in Tokyo. I I decided about two years ago to move to Japan、um, and really just go explore Japan. I was always incredibly fascinated with、uh, Amotenashi culture,、uh, with everything that you know Japan represents to me historically was always fascinating, and I. Moved to Japan. I was, I guess, through through small circles, we we got to meet each other.、Mm -hmm. I mean, fun fact though is that I actually was so obsessed with Japanese culture. I would watch NHK for years, and、oh, I remember the first time I saw Sumire, I was like, "That woman looks oddly familiar." And then I was like, <laughs> Wait, "Hanging out with my friends," and and I was like, "Oh my god, I used to see her on NHK World in the United States." <laughs> NHK World and Sumire would do the tosses between clips and these short clips, and I was like, I know who that woman is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Japan, and when we met, we have a lot of mutual friends, and it was it was a small, yeah.、Uh, oh, thank you, Josh, for the beautiful introduction. <laughs> but 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 my background is I'm, I'm in the hospitality business, so I've、uh, worked. I've opened about thirteen, fourteen hotels, dozens of restaurants.、Uh, I currently own a, a bar here in Miami, opening another one very shortly.、Uh, I do a lot of hospitality work with、uh, 
brand consulting, PR, marketing, uh, brand development, and yeah, interesting times for the hospitality business right now. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so wait, should I do? Everyone knows who you are, but my friends in the States who don't know who you are, who am I talking to? Okay, so hi guys, my name is Sumi or Sumire, um, and I am an actress slash singer slash used to be kind of a model in Japan. Um, I grew up in Hawaii, so I'm basically a Hawaii girl. <laughs> Aloha. And um, yeah, I've been living in Japan for almost 10 years now, working in the entertainment industry. And, um, but I've done some stuff in the States as well. And I, I would like to continue to further my career in, in the world, and not just in Japan. So, yeah. So you, l l let me ask, like, because it's funny because Sumire and I have been, we've been talking and keeping in touch because I think it's really important these days to find out what your friends are doing and experiencing in different parts of the world, right? Because we all kind of live in these little bubbles of our own news, our own media, our own influences. So we've been talking the past couple of months and, you know, can I just, because it's so nice to see your face and catch up as a friend face. Oh. What's up? Like, what are you up to? Because I know right before this happened, you had some really major plans. Yeah. Uh, you were literally about to do an incredible production, you know, something that I remember going to as a kid over here in the States. Like, you, were, you, you, can, you, you can do a show. So what, what's up with your career right now? What's, what's up with work? Yeesh. Yeah, so a lot of really great things got canceled or postponed. Um, I was supposed to do a musical, which um, I hadn't done in five years, but that's kind of like where I, um, you know, was, was raised in musical theater. Yeah. Um, and uh, we were supposed to do Joseph. Yes. <laughs> I was supposed to do um, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to play the narrator. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, and all in Japanese, which is really interesting. Mm. Um, but uh, that got postponed or like canceled. Yeah. For further notice. Um, well, we're. And literally about to go live like it, you, you were practicing you yeah. were you were doing everything and you were ready to go and then last second the plug got pulled yep yeah so what does that mean does that mean we're gonna wait for a, a future date or what do you think i think they're saying maybe within a year or two that they might be able to do it but um they're not promising anything mm. so Okay. Well, so, so how, how do you pivot that now? You put all that work in and you know, what, what are you working on now at home? And I'm, well, so I'm doing well, it, It's kind of a secret, but I'm just going to say a little bit about what I'm working on. So I'm working on a lot of like, um, you know, like music right now, actually. And it, so this musical really helped me because I was singing so much. And, um, you know, I, I was going to voice lessons. I was doing... Um, musical rehearsals every day um, so my voice got really strong I think and then now I'm working on some music and some videos to, to, to um, release soon yeah <laughs> which is fun and um, what that's really exciting yeah so so can, can I just tell a funny story about you singing yes okay so I'm I'm a horrible singer but there was a night that we were out in Tokyo, and I, I, I remember this the rest of my life. It was a friend of yours' birthday, and we oh. went to this small little place. And you know, again, you live in Tokyo, and for those of the those of you who don't, Tokyo is not a horizontal city; it's a vertical city. Like you know, the Western world, you walk down the street, you look what's on the first floor in terms of commerce. You don't look up and down. And Tokyo is a totally vertical city, and you know. 90% of where you go out is up and down, not the ground floor. And Sumire is like, I got a place to go. It's my friend's birthday. Like, come, come with me. And we go to her friend's birthday and we hop in some tiny little elevator, hit like the 12th floor of some building. You have no idea. Pop out, the door opens, you know, shoes off, walk in. And there's like a legit party of 20 people going on. <laughs> and this like cake challenge. And it kind of turned into this like, karaoke slash cake count and Sumire like, grabs the mic and sings and everyone's just like whoa 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 okay put the cake away for a second because like Sumire is killing it right now and then 
comes out and like I never knew this Japanese culture wise. Who, if the cake could be completed and finished, someone would make like ten thousand dollars or something. Yeah. And and this thing is filled with like full butter stick rolls of like candy. But there's like eighty of them. It's physically impossible to eat, but everyone's <laughs> lining up to try to eat the whole cake. And the, the birthday boy is like ten thousand dollars to whoever finishes it, right? Yeah, and then the music, you have to eat it before the music finishes. Before the music finishes. So I like stuff my face with six sticks of butter, basically. <laughs> like trying to help, knowing it was impossible. And I had a great time doing it. Yeah. So no, you were amazing. I remember everybody was like, wow, like surprised at your singing. I think you sang like, oh, you sang Frank Sinatra. Yeah, yeah. You I can, were amazing. I, I can do that. But it's also, you know, I got, a, I got a pretty big belly. So I think they were more amazed about me eating all the ice cream than it was. My <laughs> all right, so you're, you're now, you're, you're gearing up for more music right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on a, a few covers, like YouTube covers that I'm doing. And um, also I'm doing some originals. Okay. Yeah. So how, how many, how are you mixing it up? Are you going to do 50-50? Are you going to do, and how do you pick a cover, by the way? I actually, so this cover that I'm doing, I'm, I'm do, working on two different covers with two different producers. Um, but, um, oh, sound is something weird, Sumira side. My, yeah. my sound is bad. I think, I think maybe your mic is up, is, is it up all the way? Just fixed it. Okay, good. Well, that's good. Oh, perfect. Good. Yay, okay. Um, Oh, so Samina, so you're a little bit breaking up. Is it okay now? Can you guys hear me? Good. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm, so I'm working on these two different covers, and the way that I chose these songs is one is like the uh, the song that I've loved for years and years and years, and I've and it's a guy's song actually that I'm covering. Um, so I think it's a it's a totally different take, and so it'll be really interesting. And another song is um, the song of somebody that um, is very famous, but the song is um, something that she worked on before she got famous. Mm. Yeah. Which we can't know now. And how many originals? Um, and, I'm working and, on two originals. Do you write alone or do you write with, do you I write with somebody. Right, yeah, I write with somebody. Amazing, amazing. All right, so I, I, I gotta ask you a question with that. Mm -hmm. So not, Having lived in Japan, I, I lived there the majority of the past two years. I'm like, karaoke is a thing, right? And like, people here don't understand that like, it's, it's a thing. I, I, I have to ask you, what is your go-to karaoke song? Hold on, hold on. Two, two things, solo and group. Because I think when anyone does karaoke, they have to do one of two things. Like, this one's me, guys or this one's us guys. Like uh, you make that choice. The song's for me, the song's for us. Okay. Sumire, what is your go-to solo mm -hmm. and what is your go-to group karaoke song? Okay, here we go. Solo, I always go to Disney because- Because you want to be a princess? I want to be a princess. Yes. <laughs> and because um, I grew up doing musical theater my whole life, so everybody always like gets so surprised that I like really acted out. So you know, like the actual everything you're saying. Yes, yes. So, so I what... imagine, I imagine what like Ariel in in part of your world is doing, like the movements and her like facial features and expressions. And yeah. So I I try to go full out, and uh, so I always pick part of your world. Okay. And then if I can do a duet, I try to do. A whole new world from Aladdin. Yeah. And then so my group song. Oh, that's a tough one. It really depends on what the group is like. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, but usually I will uh, I will I think I would go to um, Spice Girls wannabe. Okay, okay. I mean I kinda wanna be like I can show you <laughs> Shining, shimmering, splendid. 
Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? Yes, you can find me and Sumire in a karaoke room close to you very soon. I will get down with your Disney tracks all day Yay! because I miss karaoke. I miss it so much. I think, I think it's such a I'm great dead. thing. Yay! <laughs> Um, so, so you got music coming. We know karaoke. I do have to ask you. So I know you were born in Tokyo and you were yeah. raised in the Aloha state, right? And we love Hawaii. And I know you go back and forth a ton, right? You're usually in Hawaii like every three or four months. Yes. Like when you go back to Hawaii every trip, what's the first thing you do when you go back to Hawaii? First thing I do is go to the beach and just take in the sun, take in the breeze and dip my toes in the water and get like cleansed because I feel like salt water really cleanses and purifies. Yeah. Um, but I, I usually just go to the nearest 7-Eleven and grab a spam <laughs> Okay. Well, that being said, uh -huh. I got to ask you, you're definitely a beach girl. I've seen it. What was it? Miami, Hawaii Five-O. I saw you on the episode. Oh, thank I, you. I know you're a surfer. I need to know what is your best sunburn story? Everyone's got one. Everyone remembers that hellish moment where they lost like half their skin off of one <laughs> part of their body or all of it. What is, what is your best sunburn memory? Or worst, I mean. Okay, so worst sunburn memory is we had a camp in sixth grade. And I remember we, we set up tents and stuff outside. And so first of all, we slept on the sand and we got sand fleas. So we were already red and like bitten all over and in pain. And then after that, we decide to lay in the sand, lay in the sand and in, in, in the daytime and like just sleep on the sand some more. And then we get sunburned over the sand flea bites. Oh no, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> so we're like bumpy red and then sunburn red. That's terrible, that's terrible, <laughs> that's terrible. All right, I gotta ask you another Hawaii question. Mm -hmm. Spam. What's up? I, I love it. It's the, but, it's the best thing that's happened to this world. But like, do you, do you think people understand the history of Spam and why Hawaii is so popular? Like, no. do you know the history? I, I don't know. Oh, come on. You're from Hawaii. But I thought, isn't it just like, it was for when the, maybe it was like the war? Yeah, that totally. Was it was totally, Spam became popular because all the soldiers, when they were shipping out, that was the one thing that they could have, have preserved. And because right. there were so many soldiers based in, in Hawaii, Spam became so popular. It's been shipped everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is also, it's like, how can you compare Spam to like all meat made in Japan, which is like just the best thing on absolute earth. And I miss Yakiniku so much. I can't even tell you, like it breaks my heart. And I, and I would think that like with coronavirus, Yakiniku spots would be like the best places to open. Cause like, we suck the air out, no problem. Come on in here, everything is fucked. <laughs> No, they have takeout. A lot of the places are doing takeout yakiniku bentos. And they're really good. And you could take out something to grill with at home? Oh, yeah, that too. They have like meat that they cut and then it's, it's raw and then they bring it to your house and they mm. do delivery as well. And you can just cook it at your, at your, at your place. Oh, well, let me ask something about that also. So when you, when you go back to Hawaii, the first thing you do, you hit, you hit the beach, you go in the ocean, you identify. When you're in... Hawaii for a prolonged period of time, what is the thing that you miss the most about Japan? Whether you travel anywhere on earth, when you're outside of Japan, what do you miss the most about Japan? Well, I definitely miss the cleanliness and the hygienicness of everybody and everywhere in Japan. Yeah. Um, I miss the food, of course, because everything tastes amazing and everybody is so precise and so particular about their food that it's just like perfection yeah um i also miss i i guess i miss the the like i don't know the 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 people because it's just like a lot of 
um, it's, it's always lively, you know, there's always so many people everywhere. So you don't, sometimes you do feel alone when there's a lot of people, but like, I love people. So mm. right now I'm really struggling because I want to be around lots of people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, let, let, let me ask you because Aloha spirit is something distinct and yeah. so is a Motenashi. So how would you define growing up between Hawaii and Japan, essentially, right? How would you define aloha spirit to somebody? And how would you describe a motenashi to, to somebody? Well, omotenashi, I think, is your thing. You can yeah. describe that better than me. But aloha spirit, I think, for sure, is about just like being ohana. Ohana means family, right? Mm -hmm. As you know, in Stitch, everybody, um, should know that uh, Ohana. So everybody is family in Hawaii, and everybody, you know, spreads the aloha, spreads the love, and the aloha spirit really just means that you know you are kind to one another, you welcome everybody with the aloha spirit, um, and just yeah, and, and just bringing the, the Hawaii, you know, has their tropical breeze. We have the beautiful sunshine we have you know everybody's so happy in hawaii you know so it's just really like embodying that and really um really just just welcoming everybody and and letting everybody into hawaii and yeah, yeah. i don't know a human being that's ever been to hawaii and didn't feel that you know yeah. everyone just feels so wonderful when they're there and I think it's just so badass that you have that homeland of Hawaii, you're a rainbow warrior, and you get to s spread that ray of sunshine all over the earth. I think it's really, really cool. Yeah. And then uh, omotenashi, can you tell me what omotenashi means to you? I mean, for, for me, omotenashi, it's interesting. So I, I've been in the hospitality business my whole life. I, I studied it, I got my master's in hospitality. Um, I was also a history major, and I know you're a geek about certain things, which I want to ask, and we're all pridefully geeks about stuff, and I'm, I'm definitely a geek when it comes to history, and I'm a geek when it comes to hospitality, and I was always completely enamored and fascinated by Japanese hospitality, because, um, you know, when, when, when you say where I come from, you know, something is like an onion and has many layers, I would say Japan is an onion the size of a watermelon because there are so many more layers of consideration. You know, Japan is a place of such precision, as you were saying, which you miss the cleanliness, the details, that omotenashi is this um, recognition of detail and process, procedure, but also the impact of it and thinking of the anticipatory guest service, the present guest service, and the, the, the send-off guest service, like Japanese uh, hospitality is, is second to none. It's, it actually exists as if it's on another planet because it is so incredibly prideful. It's also very personal um, and people don't want to disappoint you. So, you know, omotenashi for me in Japan is, it's, it's everywhere, <laughs> you know, it's the second, the, the I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a weirdo. I love flying. Um, and I love the feeling of landing. And I love it when the pilot says, ladies and gentlemen, seats and trays in the upright position, we're descending into this destination. And when that pilot says we're landing in Japan, it's the happiest feeling I have when traveling. Because mm -hmm. I know that a motenashi spirit and that consideration is waiting for me on arrival and it exists everywhere and it's really fascinating it doesn't just exist in a restaurant or walking into a hotel it exists everywhere and that's a really fascinating thing yeah. wow joshua that was that was like the best explanation of omotenashi i've ever heard of <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's japanese there's japanese um fans commenting about how they they appreciate and they they're happy that you feel that way about japan well, I, I think, you know, for me, as, as Gaijin, as foreigner going to Japan, the, the most important thing when you're there is to really observe and understand why things are the way they are. And if right. you can take a moment and respect 
the consideration and the reasons they exist, you can have that feeling too. And I think we all travel for feeling and, and how it fulfills us. And yeah. Japan has been the most fulfilling place that I've ever traveled in my life for,、mm -hmm. for many, many reasons. And the Emotenashi is really one of them. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's so amazing. Thank you. I feel really happy hearing that. I mean,、you. yes, like it's, it's, it's awesome. So, can, do, you want me to, do you want me to fire some questions at you? Yeah, sure. Any, anything. Go ahead. So, I wanna, I want, let, let's talk about Japan for a second. I,、mm -hmm. I want to candidly ask because I'm sitting 13 hour time zone difference away from you.、Mm -hmm. What for you has been the biggest change in Tokyo or Japan from a corona perspective? And, 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 I, and I ask that because I truly believe, Sume, like right now, everyone's in a different place. And I respect everyone's opinion about what's going on in the world, right?、Yeah. But some things have changed, right? Like, what, what has in your mind changed the most for you with, with、mm -hmm. Corona in, in Tokyo? Well, I think,、uh, not to sound like, you know, You know, like, like I'm bragging or anything, but I think Japan has done a really good job、um, keeping the numbers low because of the way that the culture is and the way that people live. And, with, you know, with, with no shoes in the house, with、um, just being very hygienic and clean and putting the masks on every day when they go outside、um, and not, you know, no body touch really in the culture. Yeah. Um, and just like all, all around, like I think we were just lucky in, in those like cultural、um, aspects that we, that we kind of carry out in, in everyday life.、Um, so, not that much has changed really, I、mm. think.、Um, the only thing that's changed is that we can't, you know, go to nomikais and go out and drink or go out and eat with each other. Um, and it's a little bit lonely, of course, without being able to see your friends and family very often, and、um, you know, other than like through video chat and stuff, or like this. Yeah. <laughs>、um, but, like, yeah, and, and I guess otherwise, the social media、um, and like internet world has gotten really big, I think, because、um, we, we have to adapt, you know, as celebrities, as entertainers, to try to entertain people through this. And through like social media instead of working on, pro, you know,、um, productions、um, with lots of people, we have to create on our own. Can I dig into that for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So, first, the mask thing, just so anybody in Japan who's, who's listening, I live in Miami and it's so crazy for me. And I'm from New York City.、Um, you walk in the streets here, everyone's wearing a mask. You would have never have thought about that. Here. So, you know, what's commonplace in Japan when somebody, when people in America, they think when someone's wearing a mask, they are trying to protect themselves when actually in Japan, people are wearing it to not spread their sickness. So, you know, just so you know, people in America are wearing masks where I am. Other places, zero, but where I am, anyway. But going back to what you were just saying in terms of entertainment, right? So, you are. A triple threat, can we say that? Right? Thank you. <laughs> you're a singer, you're an actress, you're a performer, you're an athlete, you're, 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 met, you're multifaceted talented, right? Thank you. How celebrities are putting themselves out in the world right now, from me, not a celebrity at all, I find interesting because catching eyeballs is difficult today. And all brands are doubling and tripling down on their spending to be on your screen and distract you. Like, I would ask you, as somebody who's an entertainer, how do you feel about fan loyalty? How do you feel about brand loyalty? How do you feel about capturing new eyes? Like, this is a very challenging place for people to keep relationships from a fan base, create new ones, and not piss people off. Because if you're not doing something nice, someone will just drop you in a heartbeat. So I just asked you seven questions. Which one do、yes, you want to take? Yes, you did. <laughs> Um, okay, so first I'll, I'll talk about.、Um, so, wait, what was the question? The main you, question? You, you, as an entertainer now, what are your biggest challenges、right. sharing your talents, sharing your materials, and、mm -hmm. keeping connected with your fans? 
I'm I'm trying really hard to to still connect with my fans and um, and be engaging fans by look like I have more time on my hands now. So when I look at like my Instagram or something, for example, I will comment back and reply to comments or like the comments or you know I started my Twitter account again. So now I'm looking through my Twitter and um, starting to tweet. I'm trying to you know, go on to different platforms. And, and I started a TikTok and I, I'm doing TikTok. I'm not 15 years old, but, you know, close enough. And <laughs> I'm, trying to, um, I'm trying to create more and more content and adapt to, um, to the internet world right now. And, um, and I'm trying to create more content so that people can engage with me, so that people don't forget about me. Um, I've been around a long time in the industry actually for like almost 15 years or maybe maybe yeah so um i i really had to continue to try to stay rel relative or you know relatable and more and more um my fans i think are get are becoming more and more loyal because um i've been around so long <laughs> yeah. Well, do, do, do you, have you found a, a new angle or a new interest? Like, as you're exploring new ways of communicating, has something new ticked you? It's like, I love this. Like, this is really cool. I'm really enjoying this. Well, I love everything about, you know, the stuff that I've been um, working on. Like, like, like through our Instagram Lives. Like, I really like doing this and talking to my friends and then talking to fans and their comments. You know, it's it's a lot of fun, and um, being able to be so close to your fans is really amazing, and yeah. um, and they're the reason why I get to do what I do. You know, yeah. so um, and I don't even want to call them fans. I want to call them like my supporters. You know, it's, yeah. it's they they created me. They mm -hmm. they they raised me, kind of, <laughs> and um, yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm gonna say this as a fan and a friend. I think today, as, as a fan of anything, mm -hmm. it's an incredibly unique period in human history because we're seeing the things that we love and the people that we love adapting equally with us, like trying in live time to not have the time to rehearse, to not have the time to create something that's polished. You know, I really take my hat off. Like right now, we're live. Like you're in Tokyo, I'm in Miami. And yeah. if we mess up who cares like i think this is an incredible time for fans to see how the people that they respect and admire are as humans probably the realest time that we can be in social media like i i, I have opinions about social media and we all do and you know i think it's really easy to say a lot of people put a lot of bullshit up there and they put a facade up that everything is perfect and i think in this moment in time like people sharing themselves genuinely and live shows you really who they are. And Sumire, you've only been genuine since the moment I ever met you. And I think mm -hmm. your fans will see that more than ever now. So I think that, you know, authenticity really means a lot. And I think that passion means a lot. And, you know, you're sharing who you are, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. no. and everybody's saying that um, there's some um, people who are writing out the Japanese of, and translating for us on here. Oh. That's and awesome. Saying thank you. That's so amazing. <laughs> well, because it's true. Because you know what? You can't fake bullshit. Like you yeah. can't. You can't fake sincerity. You know. Yeah. You you can't fake passion. And your message is always positive and it's always caring. And the things that you invest your time in are equally as such. You know, like I know you have charities you follow. I know you're incredibly aware of so many different subjects that are giving back to not just fans, but to yourself, like that are, that are, that are super important. I wish I could read the Japanese below y'all, but <laughs> I can't. No, uh, but they're just, they're just saying they really love you actually. And they're saying they want you to come to Japan as soon as this is all over. And they, <laughs> and they appreciate how much you appreciate Japanese culture and, uh, and really well, I, love it. I think from a travel perspective, was I'd like, uh, first of all, arigato gozaimashita, and I would love to hear your perspective because I think that you've probably been to what, 50 plus countries? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and when you travel, 
what is, so I was, I was gonna ask you two questions. Okay. Give one piece of advice to somebody who's never traveled to Japan, one piece of advice. When they arrive in Japan, one piece of advice from Sumire, what is it for the first time in Japan? One piece of advice, be respectful. Be respectful. Yes. Elaborate. I think Japan is so different from the rest of the world. And I think, well, everywhere is different, but um, you can say that. But there's so many things about Japan that they, they have, you know, everybody's so polite. Everybody's so respectful. Everybody is so kind to one another. And I think that you just have to really be respectful of the culture, of, of the people, of the place, of the, of the um, even um, if you go to a restaurant, you have to, you know, or, or on the train, there's so many things that you have to be careful about. You know, don't talk too loud, don't talk on the phone. Um, and, and just like be aware of your surroundings and of the, not rules, but like of the customs. Mm. And manners. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Mm. So I think that is spot on. And I've lived in Japan nearly two years of my life until this point. Mm -hmm. And everyone asked me, what should I do in Japan? I think it's a combination of being respectful mm -hmm. um, and also being kindly curious, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think that to engage with Japanese in the right way, in the most respectful way, is going to give you a perspective that is absolutely gorgeous. Because, you know, as a Western, you're a bit more curious, we're a bit more loud, um, and we have more questions. I would say be respectful and learn how to ask questions. Because if a Japanese person will take the time and they will show you and make your experience a wonderful one, right? Like being respect, listen, don't swim against, don't swim against the current, right? Yeah. Enjoy there's, the there's current. There's someone that said that respect should be to wherever you travel. Yes, I agree. I think and that's, that's what I was just going to say. Respect right? everywhere. Yeah. And that was going to be my second part. And whoever just said that, props. Because Japan teaches you how to travel globally. If you can travel in Japan successfully, you can yeah. travel the world anywhere. Japan will challenge what you think is logical. And if you could adapt to being successful in traveling in Japan, the world is your oyster. Yeah. If you can travel happily in Japan, you can travel anywhere on earth because it'll teach you how to recognize great things. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about Japan for a second. Yeah. I, I want to know, you can choose one up to three, your, <laughs> your favorite weekend getaways from Tokyo. And the reason I asked before we go, I think that local tourism in the era of COVID-19 and Corona is going to be a wonderful thing. We can't all hop in planes the way we used to. We can't all travel internationally the way we used to. I think we're gonna have more time to discover our own backyard. And Japan transportation is the best on earth. Shinkansen is the best thing so I've ever been on. So Sumire, you got three weekend trips or one. What are you doing? Okay, first, I was really um, taken away by, um, I, I love, of course, like everybody says Fujisan, you know, go towards the, the big Mount Fuji, but I like going the other way, going up to Iwate. I went to Iwate yeah. in, in Japan, which um, I went to, uh, I, I took this like one, there's like a one car train that goes around the mountains and you can see, uh, it was just around the foliage time. Yeah. With its, um, um, uh, like the, the leaves, the leaves are red and yellow and it was beautiful. And, um, oh, I wish I could show you a picture right now, but anyway, it, uh, so you, you swerve through the mountains and see the beautiful foliage and then you go to an onsen that is like in the middle of nowhere, Iwate. It's about, it's about like two hours or almost three from Tokyo. 
by train. Okay, but I have to interrupt because for people who don't live in Japan, two, three hours by train is called heaven for three hours. It is the nicest experience of all time. You're like, this is over. I want nine more hours. Like <laughs> Shinkansen is honestly the nicest way to travel. So like, hey, for every Westerner listening, three hours on Shinkansen is mm -hmm. like, Walking to the corner store convenience. That's how easy it is. Sorry. Yeah. So, no, 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 of course. You yeah. watch it. And then um, I went to Nagano, Nagano Ken. And I went to um, the onsens there for, for a TV show. And there were like so many onsens in Nagano. I did not know. Um, and there's like, there's like one that was really, really beautiful up in the mountains, like, and it's, it, and it was snowing then as well. So you have the snow falling on you and you're in this like really hot, um, hot springs and there's like monkeys around. <laughs> Nippon daisuke desu! Nippon yeah! daisuke desu! <laughs> yeah. It sounds like heaven. It, it was yeah. right before I came back to the States, I went to, uh, Echiko Yuzawa. Uh, Yuzawa, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, it was like an hour and a half Shinkansen from Tokyo. And we're in like this tiny snow village and like in the actual train station, this is where there's so much sake comes from this region because, you know, from Niigata, there's so many incredible production of rice. And just in the train station for, what was it? A uh, thousand yen. You had three coins to go in the shop that had 1,000 types of sake. And you put a coin in and just taste sake and you're an hour and a half outside of Tokyo next to onsen and snowing. It's, it's amazing, it's amazing. Anyway, so that was one. Do, do, you, have, do you have one south? Okay, one south, so more south or more like um, south west. I really love Kanazawa. It was so good. And the food, oh my gosh, the seafood is out of this world. The sushi amazing. is amazing. The crab was unreal. Yeah. Best crab I had in my life. Yeah. And I love American crab too, but Japanese crab, oh my gosh, it's a whole other story. You can't beat, you can't beat Hokkaido crab. Oh yeah, that's true. Hokkaido yeah. too. But, but Kanazawa, I was really surprised because there's like this little town that's like that's kind of like an old Japan, and it's still got the old architecture. And, and, and there's so, there's a lot of tourists, but it was so beautiful. I didn't care about the amount of tourists because, you you know, it's it's like it's a little bit less than Gion in Kyoto, and yeah. um, but it's it's like the same kind of feel, and it's a thing. I think it's a little less known than Gion. So I went as a foreigner. I went to Kanazawa, which has the third most prestigious garden in all of Japan by, by the Kanazawa gardens and also the smaller version, as you're saying, Gion, the um, geisha, we went to a geisha show there and it's this beautiful little section of Kanazawa that mm -hmm. they call it kind of like the, the, excuse me, I think a, kind of a small Kyoto, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really beautiful. Now, is there, you being an island girl, Hawaii, mm -hmm. is there an island amongst the islands of Japan oh, yeah. that you love the most? Because, oh, in what Japan, is it? There's like, in, in Hawaii. In Japan, there's like, what, 2,000 islands in Japan, right? Oh. Do you, have, do you have a favorite smaller island in Japan? Actually, to be honest, I haven't really been to any of the little islands. Mm. Um, I've been to Okinawa, but... Um, is that an island? I think it's an island. Yeah, it's an island. I mean, they're all an island. We're all yeah, an island. I mean, yeah, Japan is an island. <laughs> but I, I loved, I loved Okinawa. I went to Naha. Um, but I, I really want to go to Miyakojima, which I've never been to. Amazing. Yeah. So let me ask you, what is going to be, when you can, your first trip, when you can hop on a plane, if I say, here it is, take the ticket, uh -huh. How about this? Where do you long to return to? Not new. Where do you long to go back to? I mean, okay, so I really, oh, that's tough. I, uh, I always say Monaco because that was my favorite trip of my trips so far. 
But I also really enjoyed Bhutan. Oh, I really want to go there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the most fascinating places on earth. They literally have their GDP is based upon happiness. Yes, yeah. please, please, please talk to me about Bhutan for a second. Okay, so Bhutan, um, from Japan, you have to stop in Thailand. You also need a, a, a tourist visa. And so it's, it's more difficult to get to, but the, the, because of that, it's so protected. And it's, and it's just so gorgeous. And there's, um, there's a lot of um, beautiful hotels and resorts. Not a lot, but there are a few. And there are so many. Um, what are the, is, it's not temples. What is it in? It's not mosques. What no, they're temples. It's, it's, oh, they're the temples? Old, they're, it's, it's a Buddhist country. It's the last, it's the last Buddhist kingdom on earth. They, okay, only right. got, they only got television in 1998. Like, right. they literally measured their GDP on yeah. happiness. Like, yeah, I didn't know, but I forgot, yeah. the, um, I forgot the... The, the uh, monasteries. Japanese. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, the monas monasteries? Monasteries. Um, so we've, we went to a few of them, but they're just absolutely gorgeous. And there's one temple up in the top of a mountain. It was a five-hour hike total. Okay, and it's, um, it's called Tiger's Nest. And there's a lot of people who ride the, the donkeys or the horses up the mountain, but we hiked it. Yeah, you definitely did not take a donkey. Sumire's <laughs> got her fitness on. She's like, five hours, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was complaining a little bit, but it was amazing. And once we got up to the, to the temple, it's about like a thousand or something years old. Amazing. It's kept beautiful. There is something about it. The aura, the vibes, there's like this air in there that I've never felt before in my life. Mm. So spiritual. We, um, the, so my guide brought me there and my guide um, let us meditate in there for maybe like 30 minutes or so. Mm. It, was, it was the most incredible experience of my life. Do you meditate every day? Not every day, but I try to. Do you have a particular style that you? So, okay. So because I'm not a, I'm a very beginner meditator, I do the mantras. So, which is like, you say something to yourself over and over again, instead of trying to clear your mind, you just say one phrase over and over, such as like, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are, you, or you are, you are smart. You are smart, you know, and you just say that to yourself over and over and you just kind of like, it's kind of like hypnotizing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I get into that for a second? Yeah. So this month is mental health month in the United States. Um, and I think in the experience of COVID, everyone is being very challenged from the, the, the mental health perspective. And meditation and physical health and mental health and all forms of health are being questioned. Right. Is there something in particular that your feeling has pushed to the forefront of your recognition that mm -hmm. is something to identify with right now? There's every person watching this mm -hmm. has had a moment in these past couple of months that said, whoa, right? Mm -hmm. Like in a different kind of whoa, like yeah. what is gonna happen? What should I expect? What's going on, right? Yeah. Like, what is a woe that's important for you? What's a wow? Like, let's all pause and meditate on this. Do you have something that's special to you? Um, so I think that in Japan, the mental health talk is very taboo. And uh, I just want to start off with saying that I... I really believe that, you know, America is being so forefront and, and open and honest about this now. And I really like that. And I think, you know, I see celebrities talk about mental health all the time and as if it's a very normal thing to say, oh, I go to a therapist every week. Um, and I talk about this with my friends. And I think that in Japan, um, because, you know, of, of like just the culture, it's not very um open about mental health and um i really hope and, and pray that we will be more accepting and of ourselves and of each other more and more and um 
I know it's really hard because in Japan it's not okay. It's not it's not okay, but it's not as accepted to to emote very much, I think. And、um, even though I think crying is a big thing in Japan, and people love to watch TV and love to watch movies that make you cry,、um, but the mental health thing is really really hard, I think. And I always. You know, like meditating really helps me as well, and I try to、um, talk to people. I, I I go to a therapist as well here, and、um, and I struggle with a lot of mental health issues as well. And、um, I think I think it's really、um, yeah, it's 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 tough, you know, and to to be out here, and especially in the entertainment industry, where it's also really hard to talk about mental health. Because all eyes are on you, right? And you know, I first of all, tremendous respect to say you see somebody. So do I. And I think that people should stop thinking in every way, shape, and form. Seeing somebody is not a disadvantage. You're actually recognizing something to seek a perspective that is going to make you a better person, right? And、yeah. you know, I can say this. I know from, from the time I did live in Japan,、um, I'm curious to see who. Respons- who will be responsible for changing those things, right? Because when you're dealing with a, a risk-adverse society, to stand up and go against the current, how is that conversation brought to the forefront in a respectful fashion? And I say that with all respect, right? Because mental health is obviously something that every human being is dealing with on Earth.、Mm-hmm. How can you feel comfortable? Is it a, is it a celebrity? Is it a business policy that changes?、Uh, is it a series of tweets or YouTube interactions or Instagram posts?、Um, one thing I do think that is going to come out of this, regardless, is that everyone is a little a little bit more comfortable to say, "Damn, that was tough," or "Hey, like I'm having some trouble," you know. So asking for help. Yeah, and yeah. It feel comfortable even if you even if you're not seeking help. Ask a friend how you doing. You know, I think that it's not so much on the person that has an issue as much as it's also shared with people that should be asking their friends how are they doing. And I I try to reach out to ten new people a week that I haven't spoken to in years of my life just to say hello、mm-hmm. and. The satisfaction I've gotten from that has been remarkable. Like, not to be too tough of a regiment. Like, these are the rules. This is what you have to do. How about this? Reach out to someone you actually care about. See how they feel, and they're going to ask you things about yourself. That's going to make you feel really great as well. You know? Yeah, and I think, especially、um, for you know, anywhere in the world, I think everybody needs help sometimes, and I think.、Um, Yeah, just asking a friend or asking your loved one, asking your family, or I think you know, especially in the states, there's a lot of like hotlines to call,、um, and es- especially therapists as well are is important.、Um, if it's an emergency, you can call, you know, your therapist or call、um, a hotline. And、um, in Japan, I don't know if there's a hotline, and I I hope that there is. And、um, and hearing the news.、Um, Yesterday about you know Hana the the girl on Terrace House who passed away,、um, and knowing about the suicide rates in Asia in general, I think that we really need to, you know, discuss mental health more and make it more of a norm to talk about things and to for people and especially I think for someone like me who's who's lived in more than one place and knows a lot of.、Um, Knows not a lot, but knows more than one culture, and、uh, is a is a considered kind of like a foreigner almost. I think I'm I'm in the position to have to talk about things more openly to change a little bit of the the you know the tabooness of mental health or、um, for you know to change how people think about mental health. I think in in Japan. Well, Sumire, you already have the fan club, and I'm. Tripling down on it because if you could be a voice of that, I would, I would help plow the road anywhere that I can because you、mm-hmm. have a perspective that is so meaningful. 
and is so courageous. But and, and I also want to say from from a foreigner perspective, you know, when the Japanese get it right, they do it better than anybody. So the silver lining in this is when this is made comfortable, this will become a new way of being greater together, right? Like when that comfort comes, the Japanese will embrace it. And this will be something hopefully that will make everyone feel tremendously better, right? Because it's, it's, it's something that I think it's going to be okay. This is the beginning of a new way of looking at things. And, you know, is, is, is there a mental uh, health wellness month in Japan or is that? No, I don't think so. It, uh, we don't have that here. We really don't talk about it here. And um, I guess there's some things about mental health that you need to keep to yourself or you need to keep to close ones. But I feel like I really want I really want people to, to not think of it as such a bad thing and know that there's so many people struggling with mental health. And even, you know, somebody who, like, for example, me, I look happy on in Instagram. I put up smiling posts all the time. But I, I get depressed. I have anxiety. I cry all the time. I'm a mess, you know, and, and, and I can admit that because um, it's tough being um, you know, a human being. And it's, and it's really hard, especially being in this industry, in the entertainment industry. And there's, there's always people that are going to hate. There's always people who are going to say mean things. And um, you just really, you just, you, you have to be strong, but you can only be strong so much, you know what I mean? And yeah. you have to be nice to yourself, you have to be kind to yourself, and you have to be honest with yourself, I yeah. think. I think when you can take the things that you fear, it can turn them into things that you enjoy, uh, things that you're fearful of, that you used to run away from and run towards is, is a nice little start. Like, I love crying. <laughs> it, it feels awesome, right? And if something's gonna make me go that far, like, I wanna feel that alive every day. Like, I think people should think about the things that bring them the, great, the greatest amount of fear, how can they think about was that a way that they can receive joy off of anyway? But I, I think, you know, you, you being able to share your feelings about that is going to identify with so many people. And, you know, you having a different perspective from traveling and living in the United States is hopefully a catalyst to open up some, some of those ideas. So I, I, I salute you. Yes. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. So tell me, when you do break the rules, when you're not, because for those who don't know, Sume is a fitness freak. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> right, we're changing the subject. Okay. Fitness freak. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite workout? Okay. What is your least favorite workout? I love doing booty workouts. Mm -hmm. And here's why, because Right now, it's like oh, a booty no. trend, right? Everybody wants to have the nice, you know, big, big peach. And um, so I try to do a lot of like band exercises or like squats and stuff like that. And I love doing it because you can feel the, um, you know, the pain and the, 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 um, the work, you know, really working right away. So it's like, it's like, it's like an instant response. Um, what I hate doing is running and doing cardio and doing like burpees and doing jumping jacks and jumping rope. But, um, but you've got to do it because it's, it's really good for your health and it's good to burn fat as well. Oof. I, hold on. We literally have 24 seconds left. I have to call you back in one oh second. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. <laughs> Should I call you right back and we can say goodbye to each other? We can talk a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Because it's. 10, 9, it's going to literally close out right now. Oh, my gosh. Give me a moment. Okay. I'll call it right back. Okay, bye, guys. Thank you bye. so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.